Welcome back to The Gaming House. Today, we are going to take a look behind the scenes of the 10 most creative console advertising campaigns to ever hit television. So, the emotional appeal of stories that brands capitalize on with marketing is much more than just a product. It's a lifestyle. Individual games have characters, gameplay, backstory, tangible elements, but advertising a console is much trickier. You need a strategy that differentiates, that positions, that gives voice to a personality. So strap in, we're venturing to the weird side of YouTube. I'm not the boy. I'm not boy. I'm not boy. I'm not boy. Neo Geo Pocket Kara Shintoji. Imagine if Atreus said that to Kratos. The original black and white Neo Geo Pocket was SNK's first portable console exclusive to Japan, Asia, and Europe. It was more or less dead on arrival due to the Game Boy Color stealing all of the thunder. SNK quickly followed up with Neo Geo Pocket Color on March 19, 1999, but it never made any significant strides. Nintendo's might was just too great. This cheeky ass series seems to be hinting at his rival, the killing boldly, I'm not boy. There comes a time when someone leaves boy. Just which boy would that be? So when one controversy erupted, SNK representatives were quick to say that it was a point about portable gaming growing up internationally and was not intended to insult any brand or company in particular. Do you believe that? Let me tell you what bugs me about human endeavour. I've never been the human in question. Have you? Mankind went to the moon. I don't even know where Grimsby is. Forget progress by proxy. Land on your own moon. It's no longer about what they can achieve out there in your behalf, but what we can experience up here in our own time. It's called mental wealth. An ad that still haunts my dreams from time to time. PlayStation flirted with an older crowd from the get-go. Nintendo was quality. Sega was edgy. Sony was artsy. The newcomer needed to flex its own persona. Incomes do not underestimate the power of PlayStation. A slogan that was carried across several TV and print ads. But it would be 1999's mental wealth ad that went the furthest by enlisting a young 17-year-old Scottish girl named Fiona in some mind-melding special effects. As Fiona told Games Radar some 20 years later, they didn't even tell me what they were going to do to my face. In any event, it caused enough of a stir that photographers parked outside her house trying to snap a photo of a real face. その日、セガエンタープライズ専務湯川秀和は驚くべき街の声を耳にした。セガエンタープライズだ。セガな。プレスの方が面白いよな。そうなのか。なんてこった。止めてくれ。一人になりたいんだ。くそ。ええ。
We've covered Sony's initial arrogance with the PS3 previously, and the PlayStation creepy baby commercial has come to represent the missteps of that era. Part of the Play Beyond campaign, mocked by some as too emotionless, and perhaps not without merit. Then Vice President of Marketing Peter Dill spoke to Did You Know Gaming and explained it in terms of an abstract art piece. Fair enough. In either case, this experimental imagery certainly left an impression on the millions watching during the World Series in 2006. After Sony made a course correction to alter PS3's fortune, they went beyond Play Beyond and even did a spot with Sony employee Kevin Butler poking fun at the Weird Baby ad. Brand self-awareness for the win. Do it. I couldn't dig up much info on this particular ad, which apparently comes from the UK, but the combination of styles and references to various figures and art movements impressed me. It's very Monty Python-esque, more daring than one might expect from Nintendo, but Game Boy has pushed the envelope more than just once, and in a more adult direction as well. We're talking Game Boy's more fun than a hole in the head, or more fun than a ferret down in trousers. I don't think PETA would approve of that last one. Some of you believe your system is the most advanced in the universe. Let's review the numbers. Sega Genesis is 16 bits. 3DO is 32 bits. The Atari Jaguar is 64 bits. Which is more advanced? Clifford! Hmm? With 64 bits, 3D graphics, real world animation, and lightning speed that you can only get with Jaguar. Which is more advanced? Clifford! Can you repeat the question? Outside of ritual discussions, we don't throw around bits anymore. And with good reason. No one number can truly sum up performance. And such metrics can be misleading. Tech is complicated, and new ones can be lost in advertising. The most dreadful example being Atari's bold declaration to do the math, and proclaiming its 64-bit capabilities. Opinions are divided. Trip Hawkins, mastermind of 3DO, was skeptical of Atari's claims, as were many others. The architecture of Jaguar consisted of two 32-bit chips, Tom and Jerry, as well as a 16-bit Motorola 6800. The primary GPU delivered a 32-bit instruction set, but the data bus was indeed 64 bits wide. So in that sense, Jaguar had a point. But due to several shortcuts, the machine's performance fell far short of 64-bit expectations. It's a little technical, but the bottom line is, it's a 64-bit machine, but it's also not a 64-bit machine. What didn't help Atari's case was although a 64-bit was feasible, low sales and poor support had many developers relying on the aging 16-bit Motorola 6800, which produced games that far from lived up to the hype. Atari's pride was punished, and Jaguar has long been ranked among the worst systems ever released. We are Nintendo Ultimate TV Game System. We challenge all players. You cannot beat us. Aim your Zappa gun. You cannot beat us. Even with your robot partner. You cannot beat us. Score one million. You cannot beat us. Discover new worlds. The creep factor on this early 80s Australian NES ad is second to none. The CG has a creepy pasta vibe that could have come from a cursed wiki page, almost to the point of parody. Whatever the case, something sinister was going on there. This made the list because it is perfect for the internet. It knew aesthetics before we knew what aesthetics was. So while it likely didn't make a splash back then, its legend now can only grow.
strangely enough, this March 2002 television and cinema commercial celebrating the European launch of the Xbox is actually titled Champagne. That's one hell of a cork pop. Enough so that it received some 136 complaints and was banned by the Independent Television Commission in the UK by June. But Microsoft will have the last laugh. The ad took home awards at Keynes and the British Television Advertising Awards. In truth, the clip was a pre-YouTube viral ploy. The file was originally compressed to under two megabytes to send over email. Harvey Eagle, the advertising director at the time, told Gaming Industry Biz, the only method of sharing something virally was over email. We could essentially track the number of shares and somehow it managed to do a million shares. And remember, this is all over email. It was only after the success that they brought it to TV. The Play More campaign itself would run in upwards of a dozen countries, including a website full of flash games, clips, and other promotional materials. You are approaching Saturn. We are five years away from entering the 21st century. Introducing Sega Saturn. Aww. Hit it. Sega's next generation gaming platform, revolutionary sports and arcade gameplay, all with amazing new 3D experiences never before possible on home game systems. It's how you play the game. <laughs> and remember, Look for Sega Saturn. This clip is extracted it's from an there. eight minute promo film unveiling the Saturn in the US. The product lunch went by the slogan, it's out there, both signaling the release, but equally the experience of playing the Saturn. A $50 million advertisement push followed, including Metnik Group's print campaign, Head for Saturn reutilizing the character and style of It's Out There, but also serious celebrity appearance in the form of Ice Cube. According to Jeff Goodby, principal and co-creative director of the Goodby Silverstein and Partners said, since Sega Saturn represents the next revolution in gaming, we had to take our advertising approach to the next level as well. Sega's aim appeared to be evoking experience with a cosmic mind as a sensory link between the human psyche and the system. I think I get it. Interplanetary cyberpunk realness? You must play Sega Saturn under threats of violence. That might not fly outside of Japan. Sega Ta Sanshiro is a pun on Sugata Sanshiro, a legendary badass from Akira Kurosawa's 1943 film of the same name. Sega Sanshiro also sounds similar to his catchphrase, play Sega Saturn. Sega Saturn Shiro! Making it a triple pun. Damn, kudos to Sega on that. The backstory to Sega's version is that he is a hermit, training using an oversized Sega Saturn, and occasionally entering civilization to unleash a beatdown to those not playing the Saturn. It's a complete commercial series with a dramatic ending that only the Japanese can come up with. If you have some downtime, check it out. You won't be disappointed. And please, don't disappoint me by not subscribing to the channel. See you next week.